Good evening, everyone. Good, Good evening, Good evening everybody. Good evening, Mr. Darling. Here, here we go again. This is our last, um, our last um, session um, last on this part of the course. Um, oh. It's our last one as far as our, as our Timothy course is concerned. So um, it's more or less a wrap up of what we what we've been doing, and also it brings us to the the place of. Um, understanding that, that how important it is in for any area of leadership to be fully equipped and um, leadership is something that that has to be really taken seriously particularly in relation to um, the church mainly because we're responsible for the lives of ministering into the coming Julie <laughs> Just starting. Um, we're responsible of ministering into the lives of people and bringing the truth of Christ. To them. And so we we that's an incredible responsibility. I'm very, very concerned in many, many ways be, that people with very strong personalities can be leaders. But what are they leading people in? Are they leading them in uh, um, to something that they're not fully understanding or fully equipped to lead them in? And that can be extremely dangerous. So you can get people with a very strong leadership gift that unless they're fully informed, they're leading, they can lead people astray. And the Bible warns, warns about this. In the near future, I'm going to be preaching the, on the Olivet Discourse, which is what Jesus told us when he was asked by his disciples, what's what are going to be the signs of your the end and your second coming? This is before he was crucified. And he gave a very graphic description of how flexible we, the church, will become because we're not taught properly and how easily we can be deceived and how strong that deceit will be. And it will be an incredible deceit. Uh, in, Jesus explained it as in saying, if possible, it could deceive the very elect. So this is one of the reasons why I'm such a stickler for the word of God. We need to know the word. We need to obey it. And, you know, I was very impressed with what Kim was saying last, last Sunday about knowing the word involved. And there is, you know, just because our culture is moving and it's moving away from the word more graphically um, and where our social justice system is shot to bilio, it's not God's justice. So we're fighting a battle that is not accepted by the world. And Jesus goes into explaining that we are not, we're not going to be loved, we're going to be hated. And there's going to be challenges that come against us. And I, I encourage you to read that passage of scripture. You find it in um, Matthew 24 and 25. Um, and it's it's called the Olivet Discourse, where Jesus t tells very clearly of the lead up to the Great Tribulation and the time of the Great Tribulation. So, um, and what there'll be false prophets, there'll be false teachers, and it's so easy today. In the midst of uh, the reason I'm, I'm going through this is because this uh, last session is on the perspective of a leader. Now, we need to have a certain perspective and we need to be aware of what our environment's going to be in these last days. And that should be a major part of, that should be the, the major part of our perspective. And we must be able to say, well, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus has said on, on several occasions, why call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I say? And he's warned us that, that you know, in that day, people will come to him and say, I did all this in your name. He said, I never knew you because you were not submitted to what my word said. And you didn't understand that you were cleansed by, 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 by my blood. You still went in the direction you wanted to go. Now, the thing that we're talking about now, and I know this is pretty serious stuff, is surrender of our own self. Surrender of our intelligence, for want of a better word, apart from the, in understanding um, that uh, we can understand the word of God. And that's, you know, we've been given a brain to do that. 
and but God will I, I find that when I come against something that I, I, I have difficulty with I go into the peace mode and as soon as I do that when I say the peace mode I run through a couple of things and the answer comes in peace if I can't hear the word very clearly in this the voice of God very clearly he will show me in the peace that he gives me when I come to the truth. And it's dramatic. It's so clear. It's as if whoosh, a, a light's come on. And it's, you know, there's that peace. So trust God. We must be able to trust God. You know, I was reading something um, that might have been out of what Francis Schaeffer was talking about in that book, The Christian Manifesto. Um, that when, when you get to a stage where you really don't know what's going to happen in the future or what's going to happen as a result of your circumstances, just trust God. That's it. Just trust him. you got nowhere else to go. Just trust him. And he, he will lead you through it. But he's building that in people's hearts and minds. He's building that in our hearts and minds now. I want you to trust me. I'm teaching you to trust me. So don't think it bad when all these trials come against you because he's teaching you patience. He's teaching you to trust him. Just before we start, let's go to James. Um, James chapter 1. Verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith, and we're going to hear a lot about faith tonight, produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And tonight's not going to be a I hope it leaves you feeling warm and fuzzy, but I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't. <laughs> but that's the way it is. Okay, let's go to our notes on page 55. Before we do, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your grace, your patience with us. That, Lord, you are leading us into this deep and full relationship with you, whereby we can hear your voice, we can know your direction as we sow ourselves into a relationship with you, just as Jesus presented and in the way Jesus walked, knowing that he did nothing that he did not put before you or he only did what you he saw you do and what you told him to do. He was totally surrendered to you in every way. And, Lord, we crave that in our hearts now. And, Lord, I pray as we study more, on these principles that we're just coming to a conclusion in doing, Lord. I pray that we would retain so much of the teaching, all of the teaching, and, Father, we might grow to be more conformed to the image of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We ask for your blessing tonight in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the perspective, and uh, this is in the life of Timothy, the first, uh, uh, talking about a leader's uh, attributes and what is his preparation. The first one is the leader's life as a drink offering. Now, that is a um, an explaining it in, in itself. A drink offering is going to bring refreshment. Let's go have a look at Philippians 2, 17. And Paul is um, speaking out here. He's talking to um, um, the church, telling us what to expect. What have I done here? Philippians 2.17. Yes, and I'm being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith. I am glad and rejoice with you all. I am pouring myself out, regardless of my circumstances, 
I've poured myself and I continue to pour myself out. And this is this is the, the whole thing about leadership. You're there as a servant to pour yourself out to the people you're ministering to. Doesn't matter who you are or what you are, if you have a purpose in God, it's and he gives you a direction on your gifting, pour yourself out. Every part of you, surrender it to God and let him move through you. But pour yourself out. It's got to be an attitude. I, I, I pour myself out as a drink offering for anybody who wants to drink. Remember when, uh, I think we mentioned it last week, where Jesus was at the well with a Samaritan woman and he said, um, I have living water. She said, and if you, if he said, I have lived, I am living water. If you drink of me, you will never thirst again. Now we are representatives of the same spirit. And that's what Jesus expects of us to pour ourselves out. Come what may come. And we're going to be looking at trials that you can expect because this is the way uh, he's speaking to Timothy about, about this is, this is what I expect of you. So it's very, very, uh, it's very, very graphic when you think about it. This isn't, this isn't, this is one of the most important, if not the most important time in the history of the church, just before the second coming, when those that God has called specifically for this time are, are going to just totally surrender. And do you know how that's going to be caused by God? Remember, I read that, I read that scripture out in Ezekiel. Um, I, I'll take out that heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh, and I will cause you to walk in my way. But in order to do that, we have to say, go for it. I just totally surrender. Go for it. I just want that with all my heart. And this is the time. The calling is on our lives. Okay. Let's have a look at... Um, um, they're pretty much all the same. So look, I'll, I'll I'll have a look at Second Timothy four six. I think that's pretty much exactly the same because it's Second Timothy four six. It's just exactly the same, isn't it? Yeah, it says exactly what you just read a minute ago. Yeah, I had to double check. I was in Second Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. We're, and he's speaking directly to Timothy. This is Paul speaking. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. All this, all his ministry, he's just surrendered every part of himself. And the principle of this, the drink offering is very much portrayed in the Old Testament in Leviticus, Exodus, and Samuel. So just read those in your own time. But the whole, get the whole idea that your life as a leader is a life that is poured out for other people, that other people would not thirst for God, but you would give them much to drink okay of the spirit of god out of the the scriptures say out of my innermost being rivers of water flow we have that within that and it, it's contained the scripture says it's contained within an earthen vessel and we are that earthen vessel we just to be poured out okay the second one is the leader's obstacle course has been completed second timothy 4 6 we just read that. Again? Just read that. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, he's, he's, he's saying that he's, um, he's being poured out as a, as a drink offering. Um, let's have a look at uh, Hebrews. Okay. Hebrews. Should be seven because is that the obstacle course? <laughs> yes. Hebrews 12, verse 1. That's a very good one. I enjoy this one. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He alone can give you the capacity and the power the authority and the will to walk in this way. Jesus died to give us this, the Holy Spirit within us. And we just look unto him in everything that we do. 
Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Who for the joy that was set before him. What joy? Endured the cross. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, wow, I'm going to the cross. Well, you know something? We, we, we think, oh, yes, but well, he did a wonderful... He sweat drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane at the very thought that the, 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 the um, what was going to happen. That's pretty heavy. And uh, he's calling us to do the same thing. But I, I want to be warm and cuddly and I want to, you know, be happy and sing happy songs and all that sort of thing and be warm and isn't isn't he describing the joy part of being Christ did it so that we can be with him of course, in heaven? That's his that's joy. The joy afterwards, not the joy of actually going to the cross. Staying there or no. being there. Well that's what I'm saying. The joy he let us lay aside every weight in the sin, etc. Um, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Um, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He had to endure the cross to get to that. And the cross life, and this is what Paul said, the cross is ever before me. I endure the cross. I pour myself out. I endure the cross for the joy of being able to minister to you. Okay, let's go um, also to Acts 20, 24. I'm jumping a few of the scriptures there, but um, you can read those other ones in your own time because I want to have time to just talk after we finish doing the... Um, doing the session. <clears throat> but none of these things move me nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all whom among you whom I have gone, whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see, see my face no more. So he's, he's prepared to lay down every part of his life. This sounds like fun, doesn't it? But to know the very presence of God in your life in such a way and to experience those that that awesome power of God in our life. I think each one of us wants to be able to say, be healed in the name of Jesus and see see it happen. Like Pauline, uh, like Pauline, Paul, <laughs> no, uh, like Peter and John at the Gate Beautiful when the beggar was there. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise right up in me. And to see the expression of total healing take place in somebody's face, see limbs grow. Um, and uh, the, the recording from last week was cut off just after I talked about the man who got his full set of teeth. So that's gone out there as a truth to people that, God's miracle power is alive and well. And that's what we're called to be, to experience, be expected. Once, I, once again, I use that expression, expectation, expect, expect, expect. He will not let you down. Okay, the leader's grip on the faith. 1 Timothy 1.19. Having faith and a good conscience, which some, having rejected concerning the faith, had suffered shipwreck. So to me, that indicates that this isn't always easy. The scriptures tell us that every one of us is, is given a measure of faith. So we all have the God-given capacity to believe in God. But we also have the choice to allow that to grow in our lives. Are we prepared to allow God to be real in our life? Are we prepared to pay this price of pouring ourselves out as a drink offering to help our fellow man? Is there any limit? Are we prepared to do all this limitlessly? The forgiveness of God. And 
expect God to try you. Uh, he wants to. He wants to build us. Things will, People will do things to us that he's saying, okay, now live out what I've been teaching you. And my Sermon on the Mount, um, I, I, I taught uh, forgiveness, total forgiveness, 70 times 7. What about the same offence with the same person all the time? Forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. Otherwise, if you can't, if you can't forgive them, I can't forgive you. Because that's the very character of God. God says that at the end of, the, of the, his, um, um, the Lord's Prayer. Jesus, let's go there. Just while it's in um, Matthew. Did I mention this last week? Mm -hmm. I did? Yeah, okay. We won't go there then. Matthew, <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 6, it's talking about the Lord's Prayer, but at the end he says, that in order for me to forgive, that's a condition. Forgive. Don't hold it against any, hold nothing against anybody. And that's hard, particularly when that's done, you know, something terrible might have been done to you. Betrayal, that sort of thing. How did Jesus feel when <laughs> Judas betrayed him? And uh, how did he feel? He just had to forgive. So, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting situation, isn't it? I still haven't come to the conclusion of a lot of a lot of the areas of Judas. I'm not too sure about what Judas has been up to, where he is now. Because if Jesus forgives them, like on when I don't know what they're doing. And uh, I'm just not too sure about that. I've had I've come to some firm conclusions and then abandoned them. <laughs> because of you know the love of Christ is is so profound. Looks good. You look through the eyes of man. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, now let's have a look at uh, one Timothy three nine. We all do not just Peter. Oh yes, I know. It's very hard not to look at things from the human perspective. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. Now that's that's very important. You are we are all in this room saved beyond doubt. You have been judged, you have been forgiven, and there is no further judgment for you to face apart from what they call a beam of seat of Christ, where he will hand out rewards for what we've done with what he's given us. But we have, each one of us have earned, we have received salvation, not earned it. We've received salvation. We are given given that because we received Christ into our lives. 1 John 3, 9, that which is born of God, I've been born again, is without sin, in fact, cannot sin because he's been born again. So that is so beautiful and powerful. Now, that is the pure faith that God is calling us to have. I want you to have faith. And out of that state of faith, you can then walk on in whatever God wants you to do. It comes back to each one of us. Are we prepared to follow God in everything we do? No matter what the price is, will I do that? It's, um, it's you know, and we, we can also, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's where I'll do that. Until the... Until it really, uh, you know, it probably hits the road. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And you think, I don't want to do that though. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to ask me to do that. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, he if he does, man, oh man, what a blessing! And the particular thing you don't want to do, and he he brings that up. What a blessing it can be. What a blessing it has been in my life. <laughs> you just what did you do that for God? Okay, let's have a look now at 2 Timothy 2. I like going back to uh, Timothy because he's the guy that's under discussion. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 2, verse 18. Who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past and they over overthrow the faith, a faith of some. Now, let me say here 
be very, very careful about teachings that come out in relation to particularly end times. God, God does something. He, he works in a set way. He's never taken his people out of tribulation. He's been with them in the midst of it. He didn't take Noah out of the world when he destroyed the world. He was with Noah in the ark and Noah had to ride out the storm. And that would be not a very pleasant place to be in. So even in that, there's, there's still trials. There's still um, uh, pressures to walk away. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, you know, he was in the fire with them, the fourth man in the fire. He didn't, he could have delivered them. He didn't. He went in there with them. And I believe God, and in my understanding of the end times, God is going to be with us right through till the end because, and I see so much ministry today that's pure escapism, not mm -hmm. believing that God can, can contain us mm -hmm. and keep us through these things. He talks about um, that we are in Psalm 91. We will see a thousand die at our left right hand and 10,000 at our left. But we, it will not come nigh us, but we will still see the destruction of the wicked. So in the midst of all that, I'm not talking about a geographical place that everybody's going to be taken to, but in the midst, it's going to be, I believe, a spiritual place where God is just um, protecting us all the way through if we trust him. See, the whole thing is trusting God. I look at the story of, uh, if you only get a chance to read the book, um, The Hiding Place, it's the story of uh, Corrie Ten Boom. She was in the concentration camp. She wasn't a Jew, but she was, she'd been thrown into a concentration camp helping the Jews. And um, she lived through that. God protected her in so many different ways. Um, and ways that you would not expect that she, she grew to understand it was God's hand. But it was still a trial to walk through. And God is always with us in every area of our life. It doesn't matter what takes place in our life. Um, you know, this is very... No, it's not worth mentioning. Um, the, the, the whole thing is, is God is there. And he will give you peace in the midst of it all. Her descendants live here. Sorry? Her descendants live here in all River Dongo. Are they really? They are. So, so do you know Anne Lowry? Anne Lowry, I've heard of the Anne. name. Yeah, she's um usually heads over at um New Life Chapel and Joe Helmer. Okay. Um, they're her descendants. Goodness gracious. They live yeah. here in, in Wodonga. Yeah. You've still got the book, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If somebody wants to borrow it Richie to Lowry. read it, they promise. They're very, very, very interesting books. And uh, um, put stamps all over it though, don't we? So I can get it back. You're hiring any animal. The library was closed. There you go. Okay, Second Timothy. What, what was that? It was two eighteen. Let's have a look at three eight. Now, as Janus and Jombre resisted Moses, so did these who also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disproved concerning the faith. And we are facing that so much today. Think of, think of what's going on in our culture. Um, uh, and I really want you, you to... Um, I'm not sticking my neck too far out in saying this, I don't think. Um, We've, we, we must be focused on one kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, that Jesus is king of. When he was before Pilate, Pilate says, 
where is your kingdom? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Not once did Jesus attack the governmental um, makeup of the Romans. Or, and that was the most evil, evil um, civilization ever on the earth. And the Roman, the Roman Empire is, is um, depicted as bronze on that, that um, uh, sorry, iron on the, the um, yeah, the, the statue, yeah, the, the statue in Daniel. And that was supporting all the evil of the world. So Jesus did not touch it because we cannot change what's going on in the world what we can do is reach into the world and encourage people to come into the kingdom of god so our focus must be always i don't care what's going on around them i mean so it affects me a little bit but i i know that if i trust god i don't have to be worried too much about that i just simply do <laughs> what god told me to do and you know something i don't think he will ever let me down as far as, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. He'll never let me down. Because he has my destiny. He knows my destiny. And I know I'm a person of destiny. And I want you guys to pick that up. Be people of destiny in God. You have a destiny that God knows that you can fulfill. And just, just so walk in that destiny. You know, there's so many people right throughout the world that are just, they're doing anything they anything God wants, and it's happening even right now. Okay, let's go over the page. The leader's perspective on the eternal. Um, now, what I'm trying to do in my ministry and my teaching and preaching nowadays is be positive in everything. And you might have picked up, you know, I'm just trying to encourage you to, to just believe, 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 expect, expect, be positive about that. Don't let negatives get into your head. You can't afford it as, as, a, as a, um, um, a leader. And be prepared to stand against negatives that are coming up because there's going to be so many people, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. Of course you can. Encourage, encourage. Pour out, bore, be that that uh, flow of water, that drink offering into their lives. We need to be able to encourage each other to stand. Don't listen to negatives. Gently, of course, let people don't uh, stop being stupid. Don't you know, don't go up that street. You, you know, with love in your heart, listen because people are genuine when they say, "I'm struggling here. I'm struggling here." But the thing is, be there, be gentle, and minister that that uh, the flow of the spirit of god into their lives not judgmentally get be say let them know i'll stand with you i'll stand beside you i'll walk with you i'll go with you i'm there for you and that's what that's what makes the 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 um the reality of a christian life okay let's have a look at second timothy 4 8 i think we've have we had a look at that already um, we were at four, six, and seven earlier. Okay, we'll have a look at four right now. Right, this is the perspective of your eternal perspective, and this is what Paul's, uh, yeah, Paul's telling Timothy. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. I, I'm expecting a crown. I'm expecting uh, eternity with my Lord. I'm expecting that. And I'll tell people that. And um, I mean, you know, they might say, well, you've given it away pretty cheaply. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saved, I'm redeemed. I'm, 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 I'm brought back into a relationship with God. I'm right. Okay, um, 1 Corinthians 3.
verses 13 to 15. Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on it, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. And that's the talk I'm talking about, the beam of judgment seat of Christ there. If we're wasting, if we waste this opportunity, there's going to be times when, uh, what have you built? Gold and, and jewels or hay and stubble, but you'll still be saved. You're not losing that salvation. But I encourage you, follow him, know him more and more with each day. And don't be, don't be afraid to step up and gently and rightly say to somebody, you're going the wrong way, but I'll walk with you. And just be, you know, be gentle about this. We have to think of how Jesus would do it. When, when I see something like that with somebody, how? I'm, not, I'm not here to tell them I'm right and you're wrong. I'm here to help you walk into a deeper relationship and fullness in God. And unfortunately, that's the way of the world. I'm right and you're wrong. We can't afford to do that. That's not what being a Christian is all about. Okay. Um, the leader's forgiving spirit. We just briefly talked about that. I don't know that... Um, Uh, here we will. Second Timothy four nine to sixteen. And this is this is um, Paul struggling, and just think about what's going on as we read through this. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Damas has forsaken me, having loved his present this present world, and has departed for Thessalonica, Cretans for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me, but Mark, get Mark and, and bring him with you, if he's useful to me for ministry. Now, Paul's in jail here. And Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus, Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troath when you come, and the books, especially the parchment. Alexander the coppersmith did not much did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his work. You also must be that's that's a, that's a bit of a backhander, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, but he's left it in the hand of the Lord. What in what sort of scripture was he thinking of there? The one that says, like, don't take matters into your own hands because God yes. will. Vengeance is mine, so I'm not spoiled. Good. <laughs> uh, you must uh, beware of him, for he has greatly resisted our word. At my first offence, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. That's a pretty humble attitude, isn't it? I'm not holding anybody to account. How do you do that? How do you actually say that? You can only say that when God is in charge of that, can't you? Yeah, because you don't know what's going on in their life. No, you don't. to do what's, what sure. they've done. My word, that's so incredible. You don't know. I often think of that... Um, um, one of the, the one of the I think which commandment is it? It's, I know the, I'm just trying to figure which one. Is, I think it is the fifth commandment. It says, uh, "Honor your father and your mother." It, that's where it starts and finishes. That is also in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So Paul mentioned that honor your father and your mother. And the thing is, it didn't say if they're good parents. 
just says honour them. Why? You just don't know what their background is. You don't know why they're behaving the way they are. But love them. You know, I can look back and I, if I focused on on some of the, the things that I can look back now and say, well, you messed up there, Dad or Mum. If I focused on that, I would be so dragging myself and them down. <laughs> no, look at the wonderful times you've had, the beautiful times you've had with your parents. And honour them. Honour them. They, they raised you. They fed you. They did all those things for you. And it's, so I, I, I just think of that sort of thing. And, and uh, um, forgiveness is so, so, uh, so powerful. 2 Timothy 4, 11 and 12. Uh, we've read that through anyway. Haven't we? Yeah, we've read that through. Okay, the leader's secret of success. Well, we've been talking about it all day, all night. Um, 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18. Um, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. So that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Isn't that powerful? Let's have a look at 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 18. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, but the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Mm. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. The life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Oh, you're a real, you're a real cheerful person tonight, darling. <laughs> but this is our life. This is the life we choose to have or we choose to walk uh, let's have a look at uh, 2 Corinthians 11 23 2 Timothy 1 Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 11. Oh, second. Verse 23. Those really helpful on the recording. Sometimes I'll get lost when I'm listening to it and then you'll ask for the repeat and it's very helpful. <laughs> Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labours more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequently, in deaths often. Well, let's all be Christian <laughs> and have fun together. Sign me out. In today's age, yes, not back then. <laughs> well, it's guess what? Girl. It's going to be worse at this end from what mm -hmm. Jesus said when you read the Olivet Discourse and start, oh, wow, whoa. Is that's what really, really is coming. It is really coming. So we see in those last three, A, the Lord stood with me. This is this is what you can expect. I love that, love that story of Stephen when he was being stoned. And he stood up and he saw the Lord, Jesus standing beside the throne, standing there. And uh, he said, I saw my Lord standing. Good for him. The Lord invigorated me, gave me the 
the desire, the courage, the strength, and the Lord rescued me. It all comes from obedience. Okay, that's the end of our, our lecturing. Let's talk. What do you think? The things of this world shall grow strangely dim in the light of our Father. Yeah, they do. They do. We, um, Sharon was sharing with me um, over the last couple of days at uh, about the death of um, what's his name, uh, Sharon? Dr. Charles Stanley. Yeah, great man of God. I saw on Facebook um, they took a photo of his closet, his prayer closet, that he spent a lot of time in every day. And it had a mattress there. He, you know, he was an old, old guy. He's in his 90s. He? he was 90. Yeah, and uh, but he just got there and he got before God, and he he, he was um, he prayed every day, spent many hours in prayer every day. How do we build ourselves up um, in our relationship with God? How do you build yourself up in your relationship with anybody? Spending time. Spend time with them. Mm -hmm. Little by little in every way. <laughs> yeah, little by little. But the thing is, you know, it, it's it's God. We, we have we have don't have a lot of time up our sleeve. And uh, it's he will meet you. Expect him to meet you. In the scripture in particular, there's three three places in the old testament where God said, If you seek me with all your heart, I will be found with you. And that's what God is, 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 that's the price we have to pay, is we give up ourselves that we should know God. There's, I've got a book in there called The Heavenly Man. It was a Chinese guy. Um, he was um, in the, under, the under, Chinese underground church. And uh, he was thrown out of a building, I think, six stories. And uh, got up and walked away. Wow. Just because of, of uh, things like that and the power of, of um, God in his life. Um, and he lost quite a few members of his family. So it's the thing that we have to come to terms with is, um, all right, we're all saved. How effective do I want to be for the rest of my life? When I when I had um, when I was in hospital and having having a, a heart attack in hospital, the second heart attack, I thought, is this it? And there was I was absolutely at peace. There was no fear. There was nothing. I was absolutely at peace. In fact, when they took me into the the uh, operating theatre, I was looking around to see if Jesus was there, and without any any fear whatsoever. I thought, man, oh man, Lord. Um, I wasn't ready to go, but I was prepared to go. But then the whole peace thing showed me, no, I've got more, I've got more for you to do. I don't want to, I don't really want Jesus to come back yet because we really have a lot to do. I was listening to a song um, of, of um, um, his name, um, Heavens, um, computer turned itself off. Oh, so it was. Uh, um, yeah, she, um, <laughs> does that sometimes. Uh, what's, what's, what's Terry McKelman? See, he was singing, uh, Come Lord Jesus, come. And that's very much the cry of, of a lot of people today. I want you to come so this is all going, going to go away. But, but the thing is, we have a calling on our mind. And and we're just starting. To, we haven't seen the revival that's going to take place in, in Australia. Haven't seen it yet. We've seen part of it, but it is going to happen. 
there is going, and we, I want to be part of that. I want to see that the, our church is full. I want to see relationships and, and, and miracles and all that sort of thing happening in our everyday life. Did you watch Jesus Revolution this week? No. no. We I were think they've extended it, actually. Sorry? I think they may have extended it. They did extend it. Oh, I saw you that. Well, no. I waved at people. Oh, waved. Waved. Yeah, I know. A couple did. A couple didn't. Yeah. Didn't see me. So. Did you, did you, did you, did you go to the G? What did you think of it? Okay. Um, the it revival that happened in What I expected, actually. Right. I um, thought that it was going to be more evangelical than it was, but I actually think it was targeted more at churches okay. um, than at people who didn't know Jesus. I thought that it was really interesting the way that they had, it, it was, I'm sure, incredibly um, accurate as to what had happened, but it showed a lot of the brokenness within the church as well, which I think is important and real, but I also think that if someone watched it and didn't know God, they would have left perhaps more confused rather than more understanding of the fact that what they had found was actually the truth and not just a fad that ran through America. Okay. Was it all on America? Yes. yes. It was about the Greg Lowry and Chuck. Okay. What's Chuck's last name? Oh, yeah. Um, and Lonnie... It is. I have to Google it now. So. Right. Oh, that's disappointing. I thought they would have been uh, doing some stuff on, on Australia. No, it was all the, the Jesus Revolution. It was all about what happened in the 70s. Well, that's where, what happened out here in the 70s. Yeah. Chuck Smith. That's Sorry. when we came to the Lord. Chuck Smith, yeah. That's yeah. what I had in my head. I was watching it and I was like... Okay. Are you going to turn that off? Well, that would have been the... Yeah. The thing, you know. Well, we, I mean, uh, David Wilkinson would have been mentioned, would he? He started Teen Challenge. America. Yeah, it was only on the American history of. But did, um, did you have something you wanted to share, Sharon? I did. No, I just wanted to. Are you still recording? Yep. I want still, to record this here. Yeah. You want to record this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah. The, um, yeah, David Wilkinson was was the he was the founder of Team Talent, mm. and he's American. He 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 went into the gangs of New York, mm. and he started um, the um, um, thing called Team, Team Challenge, and mm. ministered into the drug addict, drug addicts in the gangs, New York street was gangs. Was that a little bit later No, he said, actually he was earlier. He was he started in the fifties, okay. but um, he was part of the. Uh, it was his movie on the um, road to Armageddon. That's right. It was called the Road to Armageddon. His vision that brought me to Christ flat out because he had the vision of the end day, and um, uh, that that just shut me down, and and I was a bad lad until that time. And and uh, then <laughs> then God changed me completely. Stop laughing, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's the um, he it just changed changed both of us, didn't it, darling? Mm -hmm. Although you were a bad lad, a bad girl. <laughs> I'm not being a big part. I wasn't a bad. Girl. No, you weren't. You must have been very young and innocent when I met you, because you weren't a bad lad when I knew you, Peter. So. You must have gone astray after school. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Until you met Pauline and she straightened you out, right? <laughs> That's right. But the thing is, um, you know, it was such a, a graphic change in my life, I couldn't believe it myself. Mm. Could not believe it myself. I was a very, very I heavy drinker and I stopped drinking pretty much straight away. It's and all that sort of stuff. And, and uh, the whole change in my life was just dramatic and uh, that was in the 70s and of course that's when our church cfc was born mm. is he still alive david wilkinson or is that uh, because there's one that's deceased on uh, youtube of wilkinson yeah. is that that's him no yeah, his teaching is good sorry his preaching is good yes yes 
Oh, he's a very powerful man of God. The, you know the uh, thanks, mate. You know the the movie The Cross and the Switchblade, the, the book. Mm. You haven't read it. Mm. Pat Boone played the part. Do you know who Pat Boone was? Mm. He is. Pat Boone was one of one of one of the in the times of Elvis Presley. He was one of the great singers. Yeah. He still is. Hmm? Jesus, I thought it was a very yeah. I enjoyed it because um, it was not a phenomenon. I, I read most of the forms of the book. I grew up in the world in the 60s, 70s, and the hippie and age of Aquarius. I don't ever mention the revival. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, um, Billy Graham's mentioned a little bit. Yeah. I think he was so big that the world has to mention it. I had no idea. So I really don't know. Testimony of any what I might do is, is I'll, I'll just to books. I don't make a quick announcement and then we'll turn the thing off. Yeah. Turn the read, read um, recording off. <coughs> Next week, we won't be having anything. We'll have a, a week off. Following the week, we'll be having a barbecue here. And um, any anybody that's watching <laughs> on the live stream, you're welcome to come. <laughs> Thank if you. you. If you want to. Fly Thank down you. or live in the case, maybe. <laughs> That's unfair, Peter. Anybody watching now? Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. Just let Pauline know you're coming. <laughs> or let me know you're coming. Wow. But well, wait a minute. You'll That's have to bring your own means. I think We're going to watch the movie. You're going to be away second week, too. Thank no, I gave you the wrong dates. When you said we had two weeks left, I thought you meant two more weeks, not the week, including the week that we were in. So oh. are you going to be away this? We would be here next Thursday. Oh, well, we'll, well, do, we'll it do it. Next, we'll do it next Thursday. Thursday. So we won't have a date week off. We'll be here both of them. No, we won't. We're away on the 11th. We're coming back on Wednesday. Remember? Where is Ogden? Queen was not allowed to know. Oh, it's very private. But you'll have to come and tell me afterwards. Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And a very special holiday. <laughs> um, is it your anniversary or birthday? Birthday. We're, birthday. Coming, we're coming back on Wednesday. So we'll be here both weeks on one. So well, either week, it's fine. We'll, we'll do it next week then. Okay. Well, you have to bring your own meat. Because I can't. Well, they don't need meat, so. <laughs> <laughs> your own veggies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and buy some veggie burgers. <laughs> well, you can bring something to share. Yeah, it's good. Veggie, veggies and eggs. Food. You should really try it. It's absolutely amazing. We, we do. Oh, we love it. Mike Thank even you. loves it. And Mike's not a, veg, a fan of vegetarian food. Okay, well, cancel cancel the last. Next week we're we're on. Sorry. That'll be our that'll be our last uh, last um, session. And Excuse me. Um, we'll be back to normal home group stuff. So you still won't be on. I won't be able to be there. So it's not actually on at all. It's on for you a barbecue, right? Zoom you in. Zoom your own barbecue, mate. We can zoom you in. We'll, we'll, yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. You can bring your own barbecue. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. It's good that I don't need a border pass anymore. Uh, no. What, do you still need a border pass? No, I said it's good that we don't need a border pass. I'd need two of them. <laughs> okay, so if anybody, anybody, uh, please get in touch with us. Um, if you, You'll find my telephone number on our um, church website, I think. I don't know. Is it on there? I think so. Currently, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, we're up and running on the new one, aren't we? No, no, no not yet. Okay. I've still got to write the new blurb. <laughs> I thought you already had done that. No, I, I, I'm going to. I'm going to remodify it. Actually, <laughs> well, you got a you got a new website, Peter. You or the church? The church. Yes, it's a new website. Jake, Jake's making. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to give him the job of making my. <laughs> <My personal one. laughs> okay. okay, well, um, thank you everybody for, for being with us.